Keith, can you start with prayer? Sure. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the Sabbath day. And thank you, Lord, that we are able to come together and talk about your word. I just ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit be with us as we discuss uh, uh, some dark topics regarding the, um, as in the days of Noah. And as we, as we discuss, Lord, may we uh, recognize that we may be living in dark times and difficult times. However, we know that our hope and our salvation is based on you. So we don't need to fear. We don't need to be afraid of, of what's coming. All we need to do is um, just know that to be still and know that you are God. And Lord, help us to um, communicate this truth to those who are listening and give hope, give the hope that you bring to us, to all those who are listening to us. It's our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So we are, uh, this is Infinite's core ministry. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Yardaman, who is joining us for the first time. And so uh, we have Yardaman, we have Keith, and Kim, and myself, Zach. And today we're going to be discussing uh, the subject of as in the days of Noah. For you know, we know in God's word it says there's nothing new under the sun, and we can see in archaeological findings that there was an advanced kingdom before the deluge, the flood, in the days of Noah. And so what we see now can give us some insight of what happened then. And so our discussion is going to be on this topic. And um, first, of one of the signs that we know were in the days of Noah is narcissism, complete and utter selfishness. And so, Keith, what would what are your thoughts on this uh, this topic with what we're talking about? So, in the days of Noah, we had people who were glorifying themselves because they were okay. So, I I think lost in a lot of a lot of the things that that the people before the flood were closest to Adam, and they were they were better fit. They were they were probably you know bigger, stronger, faster. They lived longer, obviously. You know, Noah lived like to be a hundred uh, six hundred something years. Um, you know, old. So they lived longer. They were stronger people. It was a stronger race than what we have today. Um, so it's not too far fetched to believe that in, in those days the people felt like they were basically gods, like they were like indestructible. You know, and if you if you think about, like, I can't imagine, like, I remember when I was 23, I felt like I was invincible, right? You could do anything you wanted. Uh, but that feeling doesn't last long. Imagine having that feeling for several hundred years at a time, you know? Uh, so it's not far-fetched, even though the Bible doesn't say it, it's not far-fetched to think that these people believe that they were like gods, you know, that they were because they felt strong and they felt like like whatever. And clearly, when you're not in that position, it's not far to think of yourself bigger than what you really are. You know, anytime that you put place focus on yourself, you're gonna feel like, oh yeah, I am, I am the best and the greatest. You know, and this is clearly a problem because it will lead to the things that you know eventually like cause the earth to be destroyed by by a flood. Um, so these are the things that I, I think definitely narcissism is the beginning of of why like you know the the human race will become corrupt. Uh, so anytime and I I believe this is a byproduct of uh, the evil spirit just sending like his own um, attributes or like giving giving it to man and basically saying. You can be like gods, you know, you can be just like God or whatever. And then people believing it, believing this is possible. Um, so, yeah, so I think that that narcissism is definitely um, a part of it. And definitely like the cause of the things that that went wrong in the in the antediluvian world. Uh, Kim, what, what are your thoughts? 
Um, I think that selfishness is the root of sin and the result of lies believed. And Satan really only has the three lies. You shall not surely die. You can be as God. Believe the secret knowledge that God forgot to tell you about. And it'll make you like God, you know? <laughs> and um, and I I was a victim to that most of my life. I got so selfish and so vain and so into myself and into what I wanted and my plans. God didn't fit into my plans. I wanted nothing to do with God. The more I drank the lies of Satan, the more I drank alcohol, like they all went together. I enjoyed going out and drinking with my friends. I enjoyed reveling in the world. I enjoyed the selfishness, the lust, the vanities of the world. And thank God that God, um, you know, helped many of the things I wanted to work out not work so that my life could kind of come crashing down and I had to choose a different choice when I chose to become, to get married to my husband and have children and kids and being pregnant is what taught me what love was. Cause the first time in my life, I cared about something more than I cared about myself. And it was the biggest like knock over the head and like, this is it. This is what love is. I've spent my whole life loving myself more than other people, not even realizing it. I didn't even know what it meant to love something more than myself that way. And, and children are such a blessing from God. And they saved me from myself and from my selfishness. They helped me see who God is and what love truly is and how powerful it is. And they helped me see the lie that when I live from a place of selfishness. I'm living from the from the limitations of finite creation. And only when I connect to God who is infinite can I become greater than self. Self is destructive in itself because it's the smallest game you can play. And when we worship things less than ourselves, it just makes us smaller and smaller and smaller. This is why we need God because God is infinite and when we worship him he helps us expand and get bigger and bigger and bigger and it's such a lie and that's the thing when you believe satan's lies it seems to make sense but the truth is you're dying you're not only dying but you're you're destructive and you're hurting others and and things around you the whole world suffers under the weight of sin when we when we detract from god and go our own way we detract from life and we detract from love and everything suffers from it because selfishness doesn't allow growth. It is a gross lie and a total plague. And Satan has fooled a lot of people with hollow materialistic vanities to believe that there's something real in it, but it's all that's in it is the truth that you're going to die because without God, the result is death because you don't have life. Mm -hmm. So I, um, yeah, I mean, I was right there with them. <laughs> I, I mm -hmm. was on that bandwagon and I'm so grateful for the gift of life so I could get out of my own identity politics that I bought and come to taste love and peace and joy. Amen. Yeah, Amon, what are what are your thoughts? I really like what uh, Kim said about. I feel like when we do not have the Lord, we love ourselves. Like the Bible says, I'm. I was trying to look for the verse when it says like lover of themselves instead of lover of God and lovers of money. They are boastful. So we're going to see that in this day, how people love themselves. Everything is about me. How me, I feel good about myself. How everything has supposed to be, it's supposed to be about myself instead of being about people or about God. So that's how I can see it. You know, it is selfishness narcissism is the root of satan's kingdom and 
I mean, the beginning of this whole spiraling, chaotic thing that's going on in the human experience, it all started with selfishness, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we, we see what the consequences are. And it's just so fascinating how we even lie to ourselves about mm -hmm. the consequences of our actions, you know? And so it, it's truly in the Bible where it says the wages of sin is eternal death. That is the only consequence. Um, there are symptoms, but ultimately it's eternal death. And we really need to share the true eternal gospel. Um, I mean, we see it with social media. It's it's heartbreaking. So many lives are ruined. Um, even when, with the CV pandemic, the the even when people said it was the right to do thing to do this, they were enforcing it, imposing, and even you know even that it's selfish. And so we see mm -hmm. Satan's kingdom, even when it portrays itself as something that does right, it's not. It's always in the motive of selfishness and lies. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to see a lot more narcissism in these final moments of Earth's history, and we'll see more of the consequences thereof. And uh, the whole universe is going to get to see it. And so even though this curse of sin has happened, we know that Jesus is coming soon, and he can he's going to put everyone to sleep, and then the whole universe can know and will never sin will never bring its head up again. We will always mm -hmm. know the the consequences of it, and it will always be in our hearts and minds what it did and what it did to our loved ones. And so now is really an opportunity to study and understand it, the consequences mm -hmm. of it, and to turn away from it. If there's any sinfulness, any selfishness in our lives, we should recognize it. We should humble ourselves and ask God for a healing. And that's what we that's why we also need to pray for society because narcissism is rampant rampant and just people need Jesus. Um next one I wanted to go into was wait. Can oh, I share ahead. something? Yes, Keith. Can I share something about it's 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 something that I I, I don't know, it's a, it's a newer finding that I found in in the Bible. So uh going back to the days of Noah here. It's relevant, but it's like it's a little bit different. Of that, let me go back to Genesis. Okay. Okay. Uh, it says, "Now it came to pass when the men began to multiply on the face of the earth, daughters were born to them, and the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and they took wives from themselves from all that they chose." Right. And then it says, the Lord says, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is in this flesh, yet his day shall be 120 year, day, years. Sorry. There were giants on the earth. Okay, that actually, that, this is the New King James says giants, but the word there is, they're, they're, the Nephilim were there, right, on the earth in those days. But look at how they describe, he describes it. When the Son of Man came to them, those were the mighty men of old, men of renown. That phrase in Hebrew, men of renown, is found in another place. Uh, but the translation in English doesn't follow it that way. Uh, and that's the leading men uh, in, the days, in the days of Moses that were leading a revolt uh, mm -hmm. against, against the, uh, the authority of Moses. So those, those guys were men of renown. There's the same... It's the same phrase, men mm -hmm. of renown, um, in Hebrew. It only happens in those two, in those two verses. So that changes, to me, changes the idea of what we think of Nephilim, you know, because the story out there is that the Nephilims are like a, a race of giants uh, oh, that yeah. were that were that were a mix, a mix of like. Uh, in angelic and human, which is not not what scripture says, right? True. Mm -hmm. The scripture only says is that, that that the sons of God, and they think the sons of God means angels, but it doesn't. It's that those are just the those are the descendants of Seth, actually. 
But I want to point this out. Is that word men of renown, that in that verse four, is found in another verse. Again, it's in that verse is in when, and I forget the character that was leading the role. I, I don't think it was Korah, but it was the other guy um, that was opposed to Moses' um, authority. So the men of renown are basically people who are opposed to God's authority and they want to set up their own. So they're renowned for that. <laughs> so they're leaders because these those other guys who opposed Moses were also leaders, right? Mm -hmm. But they wanted they wanted the authority that Moses had, right? So that they could do their thing. Again, the narcissism that we're talking about here, it's a byproduct of that. It's basically saying, like, mm -hmm. hey, if you're a leader, I could be a leader too, right? Mm -hmm. And they feel like uh God is not fair because they feel qualified to, to assume the leadership position. That's what that phrase, men of renown, is supposed to entail. So the Nephilim were people who um, basically um, were leaders in their own right, and they wanted to um, distinguish themselves to assume leadership position. So it's, again, it's, um, I guess, a new nuance. It sheds a new light as to who the Nephilim were, um, and that... You know, it's you can see that there are humans who basically wanted to have leadership position. They wanted to set up their own thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, on, go ahead, Kim. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, on on that point, I just want to add too, though, that angels don't have like they're not flesh like we are. They don't have the male and female organs that God gave us to produce life and um and but satan really wants that he wants to be god he wants the ability to create new life to create something from nothing to do things that he simply can't do because he's finite he's created by god god did not give him that power and but one thing that satan can do is he can lie and get people to accept his lie and access the mind and the heart and mm -hmm. and there are accounts in the bible and christ day that show that that humans can actually be the dwelling house and living place of a demon which is a fallen angel and if you look at um religious customs and stuff and ancient worlds like Egypt and whatever they have they have rituals to um to that they believed caused like the pharaoh to be the god on earth right so it's still human but i and who knows what they actually did but and maybe the the human was you know they did a ritual to allow a demon to live in the pharaoh we don't I don't know. I'm not saying that I do, but Satan does have powers to spiritually access and have control in a willing human. And, um, and I do believe like the obelisk and different things point to the fact that Satan can't reproduce the way we can. And he wants to compensate for that and go around in different ways to create his own image of himself because he wants to be God. And we were designed to be the living temple of the living God, to be selfless and loving and represent God and what he made us to be. But Satan wants to deface the image of God and have us represent him and his selfishness and narcissism. And when we act that way, we are giving glory to Satan, not to God. Mm. Yeah. Amen. I, um, when it comes to Nephilim, you know, I, I've noticed, like, I'll, I'll take a step back and look at it. And a lot of the brothers and, and sisters in Christ, they're like, no, I can't be the Sethite view and whatnot. And I think one of the problems, really, is that I think we we look at us humans now in our stature and we apply it to back then. And we, we think they were just as tall as us. No. Right. They were like three, four times taller than us. And so, yes, they were giants. And you even see 
Now, let's say even with animals, it, that's why nature is so important to study as well, to understand history and, and the word of God and understand how God does things is there are s extremely small cats. There's regular sized cats. And then you have big old lions and tigers. There's evidences of some giants being 30, 40 feet tall. I believe that. And then mm -hmm. you also have to add into the consideration of uh, the genetic technologies that could even make it crazier, you know. Um, and so that that's my thoughts are on that. Uh, but yeah, fallen angels can inspire. They can uh, create all sorts of beings, uh, tall giants, and I wouldn't be surprised if they have some of the DNA because I mean, this been such a huge cover but there's definitely dna they may have and they can resurrect or make clones of these giants and who knows what they're doing with them there's so many underground military bases and uh, some of my thoughts is that they have underground gladiator battles i know that sounds weird but um even in their pre predictive programming and movies they do emphasize that you see a lot of uh of what they acknowledge exists through movies and whatnot so yeah, I mean, Nephilim has a big part in it, um, but ultimately, uh, no matter how big that a human may be, it comes down to the character, and uh, they are mighty men of renown. Uh, Nimrod uh, was at was a rebellious soul. He he was totally at enmity with God. So I think these giants, these people, these mighty men of renown were completely at enmity with God. And even the root word of Nephilim is Nepal, Nepal, and that means fallen. So ultimately, it's these mighty rulers, these conquerors of men and animals and technologies, inspired by demons, even possessed by demons, that are the real, you know, that are conquering. And these are the Nephilim, the mighty men. So, so I, I find that the word Nephilim also could mean like because it's, it's 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 not for sure is those who cause others to fall. So mm. it's like it's not just the fallen one, but those who cause others to fall. So I think that's more accurate. So they're like, because they're stumbling blocks. So just like the leaders in the days of Moses who wanted to uh, usurp leadership, right? They 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 cause others to like doubt or like they may be thinking like, hmm, maybe Moses is not really the, the true leader, right? Mm -hmm. That God set up. And then maybe we should follow these guys because these guys are smart, you know? And if we and if we follow like how Satan was the one who started his rebellion, he he is to get a doubt from among, you know, as much as third of the angels to follow him, follow his lead. lead and cause them to doubt, you know, what, so he caused them to stumble um, along, you know, from the, from the path that they were supposed to be on. So I, I think that Nephilim is a, a better translation will be like those who cause others to fall because they're leaders, right? And they, and they lead people away from, you know, from the right way, you know, that's, that's what I find. One one more thing I want to add, sorry, Zach, but um, I think it's interesting too. I I think it's important when trying to understand the condition of the world that we're in to realize that if you're looking at it from the world, you're looking to it's too small of a picture. You have to expand it and see that there's a dark force that has been behind everything. <laughs> since the creation of the earth and then from that space you'll start to see why all these horrible things make more sense right because all of them trace back to satan and his three lies and then if you look bigger than that then you'll see an infinite source that's infinitely bigger than that that's actually in control of all of it who is god <laughs> right but um satan like something to think about that's interesting is satan didn't see when god created the angels and whatever else. It was probably similar to like Adam and Eve, right? In their creation. But he did see when Jesus created Adam and Eve and the world, he saw the creation account, all of heaven, all the angels saw that, right? And God made flesh and blood, designed it to be the living temple of God. 
that he, you know, also designed it knowing that his his only begotten son was going to be human for the rest of eternity. How deeply do you think Satan wanted to understand the human body? I think he has dissected it and done everything he can to understand the body from every angle that he possibly can from as soon as he could, as soon as he could get people to do that. God designed us so that our body would heal and God designed us to go to him and to go to him for health and to go to him for restoration and to go to him for healing and all of these things. Whereas we live in this world where it's all about pharma. It's all about keep your hand on the hot stove, take more drugs, do more things. Let us send you off to a doctor where we can cut you open and rip you apart to heal you. That's not God's plan of healing. God's plan of healing was never to go freaking cut you apart and sew you back together. It's good that we have that for the day and time that we're in on some things. But you look at in like science, how they dissect animals and just do all kinds of crazy, horrible things. You look at the Holocaust. You look at all these things. You look at Egypt and go back. And I really see how pharma and all these things were created as part of Satan trying to understand the engineering and basically understand the body, what God created, the machine of the body, the brain, the mind, all of it. Mm. Yarman, what are your thoughts on this topic? Uh, well, for me, I will look at it at the Bible. What the, what does the Bible say about it? Sorry, guys, my my phone was about to die, so I have to plug in. That's okay. So the way I will see it is like when I was reading one day, I think it's in Genesis, and it was talking about how the the descendant of of Cain, like when they were not worshiping God, and then the we see the other children of Adam and Eve were worshiping God, and we also know, like I follow a lot of, not I don't follow them, but I look at people's video on YouTube how they what they talked about when it comes to those uh when it says the Son of God. Some people believe they are angel, but we know that Jesus said that angels do not procreate. They do not marry. They are not native given into marriage. So that's how, for me, I'll see it, that I don't think those were fully angel. I feel like they were people who knew God. I mean, who refused to worship God. And we also have people who were following God in those days. So that's how I see it. Yeah, I, I agree with you because, because, Okay, so the way the way it's presented in the in in popular uh, Christianity, right? And this comes from the book of 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 uh, Enoch. This mm -hmm. idea comes from the book of Enoch. Um, the um, they say that oh, these these evil angels were procreating with hum humanity, but the Bible does not say that. The Bible mm -hmm. says that they were marrying. That means until death do us part. They were marrying. So do you imagine, does it make sense for a demon to just stick around for life to a, to a spouse? Does that even make sense? What makes more sense is like, because well, they're thinking, oh, the procreation part, right? Mm -hmm. just, they were just having sexual activity with them. But that's mm -hmm. not what the Bible says. The Bible says they were marrying. If you look, if you read the Genesis 6, you know, they were, they were, they were marrying, marrying. And then, and then it, then it says they were and then having children by them, right? Um, mm -hmm. But the key is marrying, and then Jesus was very specific that angels are, are not marrying. And 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 proponents of this idea are saying, well, that's Jesus speaking of the good angels, but the evil angels are not bound by that, you know. Mm -hmm. But again, the idea of like if you gotta ask yourself, like, how does a spirit remain married to a to a, to a physical? Like, do you see that? Like, does that even compute? You know, it, it doesn't. Like, I can I may see the, the sexual activity part, but I do not see the the marrying part, you know, like like being in a relationship mm -hmm. with someone. That I that just doesn't doesn't get and that's what the Bible says. Yeah. Anyway. And so, angels flesh and blood. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and also I have Go with ahead. my uh, you know, those people who cannot also teach us that those were folly angels. They also believe in spiritual husband, spiritual 
like they'll be like spiritual wife or spiritual husband. So they believe those are demons that the people are possessed with like a spiritual husband or a spiritual wife. So they have to cast them out. So I was like, if you guys believe in spiritual husband and we believe those are demons, so so we we believe that those demons cannot be real and marry with human beings. Because if they do marry with human beings, why do you call them spiritual husband and spiritual wives? So that's kind of how I see it too. Right. I, I, you know, there are it's so important to understand foundational teachings in the Bible and to really study your Bible because some of that popped into my mind was uh, in my, in studying the Bible, I've come to the conclusion that we, the soul is not immortal, right? And that when we die, we go to sleep and that when Christ comes, we are brought up with him and he's the one that gives us eternal life. And a lot of people believe that when the giants, the Nephilim died, that they became immortal souls that roam around the earth. And those are the demons and that fallen angels and demons are different. And uh, that demons are wanting to possess humans because they want a body and desires and passions and whatnot. But if you really research the Bible, study the Bible, then you'll realize that the the soul sleeps, that the person is asleep until the second coming of Christ and the resurrection of the righteous and then the resurrection of the wicked after a thousand years. And so just stuff like that. If if you understand foundational Bible biblical truths, then it really just falls by the wayside, these beliefs, you know. Truth protects us from lies. Yep. Exactly. Why it's so important. Yep. Exactly. Okay. There, there, there is a key text that I want to share with you guys since we're talking about this Nephilim thing um, that, that helped me understand that the sons of God are actually speaking of descendants of Seth. Um, and it's, it's, the key text is found in Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. I'm reading it from the New King James, but I'll, I'll point out an interesting fact at, at this one. It says, when the Most High divided their inheritance among the nations. He separated the sons of Adam. He set the boundaries of the peoples according to the numbers, to the number of children of Israel. This is what the, this is what the Masoretic text reads at the end is from the children of Israel, which is why people can't detect it. But the Septuagint, um, which is based on a, on an older version, right? reads the following he says that you know he set the boundaries of the sons of men right when he separated the, the, the boundaries of the sons of men he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the sons of god right to the sons of god so the yeah. so the the translation is off in the masoretic text text because israel didn't exist uh when uh, in the days of noah like that that didn't exist Israel came later, obviously, because Israel, like it's, is is the son of um of, of, of um, so it's, it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Israel is Jacob renamed. Okay, so they came the the patriarchs came much later, uh, before it was before the flood. So it cannot be the translation cannot be according to the number of children of Israel. It has to be according to the sons of God. So the so the 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 Septuagint has it has it correct in that in that sense so when you see the sons of of men and then according to the sons of god so it's like again it's there we're talking about human beings they have nothing to do with angels at all so but the sons of god are actually those who followed still like the um the knowledge of the true god at that time and they, and they, they were obedient they were kind of like able you know they were they were actually they believed in god and they they followed him and then the sons of men will be obviously Cain and those who decided to go their own way and do their own thing and, and reject God and, and follow his ways. It's the same thing as our day. Um, unless you were born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. To be a right. son or daughter of God, we have to be born again. Otherwise, we are a son of men. Of men. And, yeah, that's, exactly. and that's what that is 
referring to. I see where people would could easily get confused by that, but that's why we have the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of prayer. And God makes himself freely available all the time for anyone that wants to know the truth. Amen. Yes. So I think what would be the next best, uh, next, sorry, next topic on this discussion would be false Christ. Um, Matthew 24, verse 5. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Um, Christ means anointed, so we could say this. Uh, for many will come in my name, my character, um, saying, I am the anointed one, and will deceive many. You know how many people, especially with uh, a lot of the these prophets that are like, Donald Trump's going to be elected and yada, yada, yada. And they're like, I'm anointed prophet of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. There's so much of that. And it, and so you really see that. It's not just people that say, I'm Jesus Christ. No, there are, it's it goes into everyone. All ministers uh, of darkness that pretend to be ministers of righteousness. And we see that um, nowadays, you know, that's it's fulfillment of prophecy. What, what are your guys' thoughts? The name of Jesus Christ is only powerful because Jesus backed it with his character. The name of Jesus without the character of Jesus is worthless. It's total vanity. Anyone can say that they are Christian, but until we take off our dirty, filthy rags and go to God for the Holy Spirit so he can give us the righteous character of Jesus. We are nothing more than lip service. And the and false Christ and everything else are the same. How is it that in the dark ages, the professed Christian church was burning the Bible and persecuting Christians? How is <laughs> how is it that happened? How is it that in Christ's day, the the Sadducees and Pharisees and religious leaders of his day persecuted Jesus, who was without sin? Like, it is one thing to say that you are something, but it's all with God. It is all about character. If we do not have the character, then we are not Christian. Until Man. we have character of the lamb we are deceived and and to have the character of the lamb is is the process of sanctification and purification and it very well might not even happen in our lifetime but it's a daily like get, getting the character of jesus is a daily going to jesus christ's feet daily and learning to trust god's plan for us rather than devising our own because God's knowledge is infinite. And once we come to know that, we will trust that he knows better than we do what we should be doing. Even if it's not what we want to do. There's a reason. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, yeah go, ahead. go ahead, Yorbo. I wanted to add about what Kim said. Like, what's really matter is the character. Because we see when Jesus said, I don't know what chapter of Matthew is it. He said, like, people would tell him, oh, Lord, I cast out demon in your name. I heal the sick in your name. I did this in your name. But he would tell them, depart from me, you doers of iniquity. I never knew you. So we come to know that what really matters is not about casting out demon in Jesus' name. It's not about doing stuff in Jesus' name. It's because Jesus will still honor his name, like you said. Because we, he said, if you do this in my name, I'll grant it. So Jesus will still heal people when somebody, a false prophet, will use his name because Jesus' name is mighty. And in the name of Jesus, every name was bowed down. So the demon must go. So we got to come to see that those people who were doing it were not changed. The character were not changed. That's why Jesus told them, oh, depart from me. I never knew you because that's what the Bible says. So I really like that you mentioned that. Thank you. Jesus in Matthew 24, which is the roadmap of the end time, Jesus mm -hmm. warns three times. And verses four and five says, many are going to come in my name and, you know, say I am Christ, which there's 2.6 billion Christians in the world right now. 
And then after verse 9 and 10, I think it's verse 11, after, after the deadly wound heals, and then in verse 9, they come and um, take people and go to persecute them and kill them for Christ's namesake. Because mm. the, only those who have the character of Jesus are going to still stand when their life is being threatened, right? Mm. For Christ's namesake. Only those with the character of Jesus are going to stand because many are going to be offended. And then right after that, Jesus says, there shall be more false Christ. There shall be more false Christ. And then at the end, near the end of Matthew um, 24, he talks mm. about, and then when they tell you that Christ is in the desert or Christ is here, go not forth. And so Satan's going to come as Jesus. And is it is that going to happen in verse 11? Or is it going to happen near, it's like verse 23 or something near the end of Matthew 24? Like we don't necessarily know, but Jesus is warning us that many are going to come and profess to be him. Many are going to be deceived. And this is why it's so important that we study Jesus and know who he is and what his character is so that we don't just believe anyone that comes along and can work a miracle. Because Satan can, Satan is over diseases and he can make someone sick. He can possess someone with a demon and then call the demon out and make it seem like Jesus is healing them. But that doesn't, and Satan was there when Jesus was here. Satan watched Jesus. He studied Jesus. He wants he wants to pretend to be Jesus, you know? So he's going to be pretty deceiving. So, um, but I think that verse 9 is when the deadly wound heals and the new world order has power and brings back church and state. And when church and state comes back together, then they have the power in America to come and take people in the name of Jesus to persecute them. And and when that happens, when the deadly wound heals, then those four winds are, then the gospel is going to be preached to the world and, and then the winds are going to come. So there's, you know, there's a lot going down in Matthew 24 that, that I think we're getting pretty close to. So it's, and Satan has been working for a long time to get us to think that he's going to be Jesus. So it's time to wake up now and really get to know Jesus so that we're not deceived by Satan when he comes in the world that he's been building to his character. Right. Zach, what do you think? So I, what keeps popping up in my mind is the prophecy of the lamb that will eventually speak like a dragon. And we know that's the false Protestant United States that will lead the head for the new world order to conquer the rest of the world. And uh, the, and we understand that the antitype of that is Satan is a copycat. So who, who is he trying to, to pretend to be? The lamb. But, and he'll act Christ-like. He will, he will do all these things, act righteous and all that. But we know that uh, what is so important is understanding God's laws because we'll know even though he acts righteous, all the, even if he looks like he has this Christ-like character, we'll know that he is a false Christ because he will impose laws. That he will punish those that break his laws and have people follow suit and, and follow his methods and ways. So I, I, that's another thing. He's the ultimate Antichrist. He's the ultimate fulfillment of every Antichrist that the Bible talks about. And uh, yeah, Antichrists have a big big part in this in this battle this great controversy yeah well the thing that i want to add to that sorry i've been hitting revelation 13 pretty hard lately and matthew 24 but um when satan comes as jesus in the new world order i'm forgetting what i was going to say but he is going to impose laws but his laws are godless. His laws are godless because they are void of love. And mm -hmm. and um and I'm seeing more and more in the world that like Satan was was, you know, the, one of the most beautiful of God's creations and and he's going to be able to 
you know, wow people. He's going to have, you know, be very bright, very beautiful, be able to, he's very deceptive, very, you know, kind of like that vampire that just can, you know, get everyone to like it, even though it's going to come drain your blood and kill you. Right. But, um, but anyways, he is going to show up in a lot of places. And I've seen things. Ellen White wrote that Satan, you're going to be able to tell because he'll come along and make things sound really good. But he will say things that are not in harmony with the Ten Commandments. And it's really interesting because I, I read something lately. And I, I grew up LDS and I love the LDS community. But this is the danger of trusting a prophet or the Pope or any human above God. Because we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is inf has the infinite knowledge of God. Which is something that no Pope, no prophet has. And... I read an article of a, a Seventh-day Adventist that wrote a letter to um, one of the Mormon prophets that is now deceased and, you know, went on this long thing talking about how the Sabbath was changed. And, you know, it's not my approach. I would have pointed out how Jesus kept the Sabbath because Jesus is the way. And, and it's, it's easier to defy like a, like a textbook reading of the Bible than it is to defy no, Jesus did do that. And uh, am I going to choose Jesus or am I going to choose choose the, the doctrine of my church? Because who do I, do I, am I supportive of my church doctrine or am I really in love with Jesus, right? I mean, anyways, wrote this like, long list of, of the Sabbath and how the Sabbath wasn't changed and, and then sent it off. And then the, the prophet sent back a, a, you know, a kind response, but was very vague and just kind of dodged the question, right? So he wrote him again and was like, no, 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 no. This is, you know, this is an important question that has to do with Jesus. It has to do with, with everything. And so then they wrote back and said, you know, there's a, there's a vision that Joseph Smith recorded where Jesus and God came and visited Joseph Smith and it's in Doctrine and Covenants. And basically they said they came and visited Joseph Smith and told him that God changed, that the Sabbath was changed, right? So they believe that the the vision of Joseph Smith over the Bible, and that's okay, a lot of people don't fully understand the Bible, which is why I think it's so important to point to Jesus, because most Christians can come to an agreement when looking at Jesus, right? Or at least have to like really question themselves. The Bible, there's a lot of different opinions, but you can't really refute Jesus. But anyways, and Ellen said that that's how you're going to be able to tell. And the thing is, is false. I really believe that fallen angels come and visit people and <clears throat> pretend to be aliens or they pretend to be, you know, an angel or they pretend to be God or they pretend to be Jesus, right? They come and look like it. They can impersonate him. And then when... And fallen angels want to be God, want to be God because they believe the three lies. They're narcissistic. They want your worship. But you look at the angel in John that was like, don't worship me, worship God because he's holy. Holy beings understand, don't worship me. You need to worship God. He's infinite. He can make you bigger. I can't. You don't worship me. So Satan and his angels, Satan has his own law and it's godless. And he's trying to reinvent God's law and bring his own government, which is based on fear and force and coercion and godlessness. And God's law is based on selflessness and love and and truth, right? So you can kind of tell those things. But And you look throughout the Roman Catholic system. And why is the Roman Catholic papal system, you know, like sometimes, especially if you're Catholic, if you're a Catholic and you're watching this, is probably somewhat annoying to hear, you know, them point to the Roman Catholic system. But the Roman Catholic system in the Dark Ages persecuted Christians. And that system was dark because they had the power of church and state. And you look at Satan and he always accomplished his biggest cruelest fates when he had full power of church and state. And he brought his own government, his own version of what he wants the government to be, which is... If you look at it, it is cruel and narcissistic and it it is selfish and you can see it in like any monarchy and and what's it what's it called? What's China? 
uh, what system do they have? Communism. Communism, communism and communism and Marxism and authoritarianism, all those things where the state becomes God and people serve the state instead of God. And um, that's where this godlessness is going to lead to. It's going to go from the godlessness of of the liberalism and then get pushed over to authoritarianism where the state becomes God and you worship the state or you die. It's, it's how Satan works. And so, but I just think it's really important when we start to look at it from Satan and see what he's doing. It's so much easier to see how he comes and deceives people into believing that he's holy into believing that he's God. There's like the entire, there's so much in the LDS doctrine and I don't like bringing this up because I don't, I don't like going against the church that I was raised in, but I picked up the the book of Mormon and the Pearl of Great Price is basically the book of Genesis with extra. And if you read it, you can see the three lies. You shall be as God or Mm -hmm. you shall not surely die. You shall be as God. Believe this extra knowledge from the Bible, and you can be as God. You can have your own world. You can be God. Like, it's part of the doctrine. You see it in the Catholic Church. You see it throughout Christianity. The soul is immortal. Ye shall not surely die. You Mm -hmm. can, you know, you can live in sin and, and still find salvation. Like, these are lies and there is what Satan is using to try to deceive us so that we don't have the Holy Spirit in our life. We don't trust God every day and we go and get swept away with the system. Yeah, just, I wanted to, go ahead, Keith. I just, just uh, real quick, I wanted to um, point out so some interesting things about how Satan, the, the, the lies of Satan, he contradicts himself. So his point of rebellion uh, in heaven was because he thought that the Ten Commandments were restrictive and inhibited freedom. So Satan comes out and promises freedom, right, to those who like, just, oh, just, just free yourself from, from the law, right, or whatever. But here he comes and imposes his laws. So, so it's it's just he wants freedom from the law of God, which is which is good, in order to set up his own law. He wants to be selfish. <laughs> you see, you, you see, you see the contradiction <clears throat> there. So, like he he, yeah. he thinks like, okay, you guys you guys can have all freedom, or whatever. But when it comes down to it, oh no, okay, uh, you need to follow my laws now. You know, I, and obviously they're godless. Obviously, they're they're completely like the void of love and whatever you know but they're just but they just happen to be his they're his you know which is not god's anyway so it's again and this is this is the truth of like there's there's a little book um that was profoundly um impactful when i read it in high school um i know people have heard of, of uh orwell um he's he's best known for authoring 1984 it's a, it's a huge book about big brother but I didn't. I didn't read that book. I read Animal Farm. I don't know if have you read that in high school. I've heard of it, but I haven't read it. Oh my goodness! It is. It is a tiny book, but it, it is. It is an amazing book. It, it talks about. Okay, so quickly, I'll, I'll tell you what what this is about. It, obviously, he uses allegory, and you know, in these animals, um, he says, "Okay, so there's there's a farm, and." Um, and, and the animals in the farm led by the pig, the pig was the leader, the ringleader, says, you know what, we, we shouldn't be, um, you know, we're always like at the mercy of these humans. So let's set up a rebellion against the mm-hmm. humans. And they somehow successfully rebel against the, 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 the farms, the farmers, the humans, and set up their own government, right? So now they're free, they're free or whatever. But now the pig begins to, set up a, a government where it is just as bad or even worse than what it was like he set up an oppressive government so now they all serve the government that he set up anyway at the end of the day right it the the the, the form of government that they set up was communism and basically was serve, helping to 
uh, the animals were now serving the few, the few meaning the pig, who was just gorging himself with everything that these animals were doing for him. You know, so it was this this book was written in the 60s. Uh, when was it? It was like during like when the Cold War era was was uh was, was happening and it, it was a it was a very um instructional way of how um uh like the the, the lie of like freedom like this <laughs> like let's have a revolution or whatever leads to like oh the common people like let's let's have a, a a commonality but the human heart is not like that it wants all of it for itself so yeah. the the one who like organized the thing, even though he he promised you know communism and freedom, he becomes a, a completely totalitarian system of, of of making. That's exactly what we see. We see that in North Korea. We see that in China. We saw it in Cuba. We we see it now, like in Venezuela. Correctly, um, you know, it's it's supposed to be for the people and for the benefit of everyone, but in reality, all of it now comes into the hands of the state or one in particular one person, right? And and they take it all. Like the the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, for example, like you know how rich those guys are? And that the, the entire resources supposedly belongs to the people, but the king takes it as as it is his. And then everybody else, you need to like starve and fight for the for the for the meager for the for the pieces that the crumbs that are available. Like the rest of the people are and this is how humanity is, and this is this is exactly how the government of Satan operates. You know, he promises freedom, but in the end, what he does is takes it all for himself. And the contrast, sorry, the contrast of that is that Jesus, and this is why we have to look to Jesus Christ, because he is the only person that has ever lived without sin, and he is exactly the opposite of Satan. He who was God and had no reason to leave his throne other than the love he had for his creation, left his throne and made a sacrifice that is infinite. It is greater than what we comprehend. He, be, he left his space in infinity and became a finite human that he will re remain to be forever. And he's going to be glorified. So there's, I'm sure there's some, something, but, the limits of the finite and the infinite are infinitely far apart. So he sacrificed something and he sacrificed the relationship he shared with God, the father and the Holy spirit. And that is something that he, the sacrifice that they made is one of infinite proportions that we will never ever be able to comprehend. He sacrificed all that came down, lived a sinless life, was tempted in every way that we are, was, was hated treated poorly his whole life he was satan do you think satan didn't go to every heart and mind that he could and didn't do everything he could to try to defeat jesus mentally spiritually and physically he did he did all of it and jesus came out of all of it in love gave his life let his own creation torture and murder him gave his life willingly and freely for our benefit God gives of himself to benefit us. Satan takes from us to benefit him. It's a complete opposite. And that's the why we have to look to Jesus because he's the only person that has ever lived that didn't use power for his own personal gain because he shows us who God is and how God works. And that's why we have to study him because Satan is a lie. Amen. Amen. Um, Yardaman, before we move on to the next topic, what do you have anything to say? I just wanted to say that what really make uh, God and Jesus different from Satan is that Jesus is loving. Satan is he cannot love no matter what. Like she said, he oh he always gives to get something back. But when God gave, he really gives. He's like really loving. So that's the difference between. Satan and God, how Jesus is really loving that he laid his life down that we may have life. So that's really amazing. So that's the difference between like the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan, the love that God has for us. No one else can have for us. Amen. Amen. Um, I think, you know, leading it to this is, uh, you know, 
uh, mind control. Uh, lies. Deception is the name of the game. What? Uh, I don't know. I, I, for full, I, I want to get into full time ministry to help those who've gone through satanic ritual abuse and trauma based mind control. And when you study these things about mind control, it's everywhere. Literally. That it's everywhere. It is truly the name of the game. It is the center. One of the major centers of Satan's kingdom is mind control. And that's the ultimate umbrella of all forms of it, including deception and propaganda. And so I think we I think it's vital in the times we live in, it's to really understand the truth of God, his character methods, his laws, the great controversy. And with eyes to see, we can see through all these lies. Because if you do not have Christ in a proper understanding of him and everything about him and his laws and this great controversy, you are going to be under mind control and you will fall for it. I mean, I my walk with God, it's been hard. And uh, there's so many lies believed that mess with you. And, and until, the, you know, you see the truth and it sets you free, it's um, overwhelming and extremely powerful and extremely deceptive that you don't, you don't realize you're deceived, you know. You don't, you know, or else it wouldn't be a deception, you know. So right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's really, I, I don't know, from my experience, it's really hard to share truth with people. Because it's so hard to let go of deceptions, you know. Uh, I um I I don't know. I think that understanding the truth is extremely vital, and also understanding the the lies of Satan, um, and how what tools he's using, and to understand that you know we should be careful. Social media, television programming, television TV program programming. You're being programmed. Um, same thing with social media times a hundred times a thousand, um, and following churches, you know, instead of following Christ, you know, Kim, uh, it, when you talked about the LDS church and, and, you know, people follow the church, they follow a leader, prophet or false Jesus Christ without really comparing the life of Jesus Christ. Or looking into the history of that person that calls themselves a prophet, what they say, what they've done. I think if a lot of people just looked at the history of their prophets, uh, it's quite evident that they're false prophets. And so, guys, I think we have to have a humble heart and be uh, lovers of truth. Because those are the ones that will be in the kingdom of heaven, or those that are lovers of truth. Not those that they may know the truth. The ones that love the truth. And that's how, you know, that's how we'll get through this is through Christ Jesus. We, um, the deceptions are so great. And I think a big part in a lot of people's demise is the, the hatred of truth and also pride and self-righteousness. And yeah, I, I don't know, guys, what are your thoughts on this matter? So I'll make two points uh, regarding what you just said, Zach. So we got a we got a mind control. I don't know if you guys are aware of a, a recent movement. Well, it's not that recent, but it was like of a few years ago. Uh, mindfulness. Have you heard of this term before? What mindfulness is? No, never. I'm I'm surprised Zach, that you haven't heard of this. Okay, so if you Google mindfulness, let me see if I Google this real quick. Uh, mindfulness is uh, again. This is again my. Um, Again, an invade mindfulness. So it's, it is an actual practice, right? Mindfulness mm -hmm. is the basic human ability to be fully present, aware of where you are and what you're doing, and not overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's uh, cut off. Well, what's going on around us. Okay. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Right? It is a deception. <laughs> it is, a, you know what this is? This is a, a Western version of Eastern meditation, point blank. What is the, okay, so notice that the Eastern religions have the same terminology in meditation, you know? 
the biblical meditation is different from Eastern meditation um, that, that's out there. And that's what complicates things, right? Because you think, mm -hmm. oh, I'm meditating. Oh, you're meditating, I'm meditating too, right? And you think they're doing the same thing. They're not. Biblical meditation always meditates upon God, his law, his character. You know, you actually are focusing on somebody better than yourself, right? So that you may become that. Eastern meditation focuses on, on self. Eastern meditation, like, says, okay, turn everything off and let's just be in the present. Let's focus on self. So we need mm -hmm. to reach that inner voice, whatever that is, right? Uh, where to where we can like be in tune with ourselves because somehow we actually have all truth in within us we just need to access it see the lie there you know mm -hmm. so mindfulness is actually a practice now it is it is uh it is a um like bona fide thing that so basically like big corporations are putting it for their workers to do so like say like a few hours before lunchtime, they engage in mindfulness, you know? And supposedly, according to like proponents of this thing, work productivity has increased because of it. So this is now has come like, you know, so Eastern meditation, which used to be in the realm of like, you know, Hinduism that nobody in the religious thing, now it has become a scientifically proven thing to actually like get you better to like be more productive in the world mm -hmm. you see you see how it has so it has been repackaged so the 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 principle of hinduism has been repackaged to the into the west as a beneficial practice that everyone should 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 engage in so by the way um back this was a good five six years ago back in the day i had a i had a roommate who was aware of there was a there was a guy who was a proponent of this of this mindfulness practice and uh, he was he was a student at USC USC being one of the most influential universities in Southern California obviously you get like big time speakers come in and like you know giving talks and things of, of what it was what they're going to expect in the workplace um, and mindfulness is one of the topics and according to my roommate. The guy said literally that you will hear mindfulness as a as as a word um, everywhere in the coming years. And sure enough, like almost like a like a prophecy came through that I would hear it. I had another another friend of mine who was you know it was in the church or whatever, and he told me he was doing mindfulness in the work. I'm like, what? And like like yeah, you know this the workplace just promoted this this program and it's wonderful. You know, and <laughs> this guy's a Christian. He's, a, you know, and 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 I'm like, you know, and when I, whenever I I told him about like you realize what you're doing, and it was there was resistance. He actually thought that it was a good thing, you know. So he thought I was like out of my mind or out of my rocker, all these things, right? Um, so this is how deception. This is again another form of this the deception that comes in the principles of Hinduism, which is basically another form of like you know satan trying to get in to have his ways you know in into into the uh uh into the into the mainstream now he has repackaged you know um uh what is it uh meditation with mindfulness so mm -hmm. that's another thing that so so that go to, to 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 your to your thing about mind control absolutely it's happening but it's happening in a way that you wouldn't think like like it's happening in ways that that people are accepting it because it's scientifically um, proven to be beneficial, proven quote unquote to be be beneficial, and people do it willingly. Yeah, I um yeah. real fast, and I'll let you guys uh, talk about it. But when you when you brought that up, I something that came to my mind. One of those things that go hand in hand with deception is feelings which really amplifies the deception. Well, this mindfulness, it makes me feel good. And that yeah. really creates a strong atta uh, attraction. So when there is truth revealed, it makes them feel uncomfortable. And they're like, well, this makes me feel good. 
I'm going to choose what makes me feel good. Oh, this right, part, this right. this uh, fa dead family member that came to me, or this angel that came to me and told me about this, that like, totally goes against the Bible, but it made me feel good, and and what they told me felt good, and um, it's uh, and also the feelings of fear, you know, uh, great deception that creates fear, and that turns off your brain, which makes you more suggestible and open for deception. Feelings have a great part mm -hmm. in this uh, end time de uh, deceptions. Feelings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, basically, if we simplify it as much as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. God gave us all power over our lives when he gave us the ability to choose because he gave us a conscious mind. Our mind is the most powerful thing that we have. And mind control is all about Satan getting us to believe lies. When we believe Satan's lies, we open the door to Satan and his fallen world. We give Satan authority in our temple, in our body. When we open our mind to truth, we allow the Holy Spirit in. It's like, I'm not even joking. I swear it's like like the vampire movies. It's totally like vampire can't come in unless you invite them in. Like the vampire is immortal. It doesn't die. It sucks your blood and drains you of your life. It's so seductive. Like it's Satan. It's just like another ploy of the whole thing, you know, like. It's so funny. And like the walking dead, you watch these things like the walking dead, like you're basically zombies. When we let Satan into our mind, we don't use our own brain. We really are kind of like the walking dead. We're completely detached from life, but we're still kind of just the shell alive, walking around, eating other people, eating their brain, mm -hmm. eating their brains. Like I used to watch all that stuff. And then when I came to know God, it was like, Oh my word. <laughs> it's all so insane. And then the other thing is just, um, the my comment on the LDS community and, and Catholics, I just want to say too, if there's anyone out there listening from either of those, I love all denominations and so does God. I have nothing against anyone. All I'm saying is that we have to trust God and God alone. We have to be working to build our relationship with the Holy Spirit to where we go to God and trust him first because only he knows each of us individually. Only he knows the future plan for us. And I know so many LDS people and I know so I go and I go to church with other people and other denominations, LDS denomination included. And I meet people all the time that have, have the Holy Spirit with them, even if they're studying the Book of Mormon or whatever else. And I had a true ex conversion experience studying the Book of Mormon because there are still a lot of things that point you to Jesus and point you to charity and point you to service and point you to selflessness and point you to love. And God will meet anyone where they are in any denomination and help you grow and get to where you need to be. And the sh there's a shaking coming. And I truly believe that verse 10, what is it? Nine verse nine of Matthew 24, where people are offered up for Christ's namesake. That's going to be the shaking when that happens and the true Christian, the true Christians stand up, the shaking is going to happen. People are going to be offended. And then the latter rain is going to come because the gospel is going to be preached throughout the world. So that's when the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out because, because Christians are standing up. Like when COVID happened, it's waking people up and there's a lot of people searching for truth. And as the world gets darker and darker, people realize like, what is going on here? Not everyone wants to go along with the darkness and the craziness. People are looking for truth. They're looking to get out. So turn to the Bible, turn to prayer, turn to Jesus. And and because I tell you what, the sealing in Revelation where it talks about being sealed in the forehead before the winds are loosed, the sealing is the Holy Spirit. Having the Holy Spirit in your brain, in your mind, mind control. We do not want Satan in our mind and heart. We want God and the Holy Spirit in our mind and heart. And when those winds are loose, if you don't have the seal of God and the Holy Spirit with you, you're going to be at the mercy of Satan. And that will be the worst 
darkest place. And when you, <laughs> and repentance, I, I'm not going to say that, that probation is closed and people can't repent. I'm just saying that people might be too far gone at that point because mm -hmm. they've chose lies so many times to where mm -hmm. they, the, the sin where the Holy Spirit was that a sin that you like deny the Holy Spirit. The and unpardonable. Un unpardonable un sin. Yeah. 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 Like don't let yourself be in that place where maybe that's the result. Because how horrible would that be to be at the mercy of Satan and actually see, lose, because God uses his power to protect us from evil, to protect us from sin, to protect us from Satan and his, his groupies. And when he, when the wrath of God comes, which is him letting us go, letting us go to our choices and Satan all of a sudden gets to come in and show his true colors, how terrifying, how horrible. I want God and the power of the Holy Spirit to be a shield of protection, even though I might get persecuted and, and go through a short period of who knows. I gave God my life. I told him, if you can reach anyone in my life, if you can reach my children, if you can reach my husband, if you can reach my family, if you can reach my neighbors, if you can reach anyone I know, God, please use me however you need to. If I need to be a martyr, if I need to stare, stand and bear witness for you, whatever you need, my life is yours. Because I know that God will only use my life to reach the people I love so I can spend eternity with them. Amen. I want God in my mind. I want the protection of God. I do not want to see the true colors of Satan and be in his playground when those winds are loosed. And that is why we are making these videos. And this is why we are sharing these things because I used to fall victim to Satan's lies so deeply that I hated, I didn't hate God, but I don't like Jesus and I didn't want anything to do with him. But that's only because I didn't know him because I never took the time to study him. And once I did, I found, like when I started reading the Bible, I was scared. I read it out of fear. And now I know it's coming and it's actually probably a little bit scarier than I thought it would be, <laughs> but I'm not scared because I have the power of God. I know he's watching out for my children. I know he has a plan. I know he's in control. And I know the only reason that any of this is being allowed to happen is because it's going to bring salvation. It's going to help free people for eternity. And the cost, like the cost of death, eternal death, God understands what that means. We don't. God doesn't want anyone. He doesn't want to lose anyone. And that's why we need to share our testimonies of what God has done for us to wake other people up. Because who knows what's coming? And they're getting so much control over the internet and social media and all these things. How long do we even have that we can still share these messages? Like, seriously, the time is now. Amen. And that's that's my soapbox. Preach it, sister. I like your passion. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yarman, what are your thoughts? Um, I was just thinking about when we talk about movies and how there's TV. So how the mind is being programmed to think of the, when in the book of Romans 12, it says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. So we know we have the patterns of this world, like movies and TV shows. And like the world has already has its patterns that people are following, that everybody is watching. So, and we also have God's pattern. That is his word. And because the word says, do not be, con do not be conformed to, this, to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we see that we can only be transformed by the renewing of the mind. So if the mind is not renewed, according to God's word, we are not transformed. If we still have a mindset according to the things of this world, like the TV show, the movies, and social media, if our mind is being programmed by those stuff, we will not be transformed. And we know only God's word has the power to transform us. And it's only by... God's grace through the Holy Spirit, like by the working of the Holy Spirit on our hearts and our minds will be transformed because God will say this and the word is saying this. And what we 
going to come to light to put our mind on. If I spend my whole day on social media, following ungodly stuff, following all kind of stuff, my life will be patterned according to this stuff because this is what I'm feeding my mind on. But if I spend my time on God's word and around godly people, studying the Bible, my life will be transformed and my mind will be reset according to this stuff. So I'm, that's how I really see it that way too. Good. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, you know, um, mind control is such a it's such a big umbrella in that you can uh, encompass encompasses so many things we could talk about. Um, I would just hey, can I can I say yeah. something also in that a little bit? Yeah, please. It, yeah. It, it it seems like the way that 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 Satan works, as opposed to like the way God works, right? He he likes to use uh like leaders and influencers to move masses. You know, so even the word like influence, like you've heard of influencers, right? Um, in social media, they're important. They play a role that that's 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 in accordance with the way Satan works because he takes the leaders, right? The leaders, and then he knows that people are like sheep; they like to follow. Like, and then as as crowds kind of gravitate or whatever, and this is why this is. And I'm I'm sorry to kind of bring this some this up here, but. This is how like religious denominations kind of have power, because like you have a, a a bunch of people like following and they just they don't necessarily like internalize what they what what they teach, but like well they're they're going that way, so I'm in this, so we'll go with that, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't really think for themselves like okay, what does the scripture actually say, you know? And this is how kind of Satan works is is he doesn't really care that and, and interesting that. The contrast between the seal of God, which is only goes in the forehead, versus the the mark of the beast, which is can either go the forehead or the hand. So Satan can get you to just do the uh, the religious part or like like do these things, even though you don't you haven't bought it yourself. As long as you go mm -hmm. along with the crowd, he's satisfied with that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but the way Christ goes is he he wants to like. Um, how about that personal relationship where like it's one on one so that you know like okay who he is and mm -hmm. it's not about like okay like a leadership and like go with the wind of what everybody else is doing he wants you to really get to know him and like your your knowledge of him gives you the convictions and gives you the um the decisions that you make for him you know because you have you fell in love with him and that's what he wants and you will just mm -hmm. do basically whatever for, for, for his sake and become loyal to him. So I find it interesting that, yeah, it's, it's sensationalism, um, popularism, whatever is popular, all these things that, you know, he, <laughs> Satan uses the leaders to, to, to influence other people. I, I do want this to be another, th there to be another part. And so maybe next time we could do this, a part two of this. But some ne the next thing I wanted to talk about is war uh, and you will hear of wars and rumor of wars see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines pestilences and earthquakes in various places but you know before that uh before verse six it said for many will come in my name saying i'm the christ and will deceive many you know i find it fascinating is that during the 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 First, um, when Donald Trump was elected president and all that, it was fascinating to see. And after with the the second time, but when he lost, there was a lot of false prophets that were saying, oh, he's going to win and all that. There was a lot of false prophets and, and whatnot. And a lot of false Christ figures that were promoting Donald Trump. I find it interesting that after that, all these false prophets, now there's like, Ukraine and all these rumors of World War Three, and and you know there's definitely going to be a, a hot war sometime for that shared trauma uh, to to control the people, the masses. Um, but yeah, I just thought we'd lead this to a close, uh, talking about the, the war. I mean, it just shows that we're so close, and yet 
this is just the beginning of sorrows. Of course, we know time will ramp up. It'll it'll be very quick, but like we're so close. And uh, but and that that again, it goes under the umbrella of mind control as well because uh, trauma is created to make people more suggestible uh, when they're under fear. And so it just tells you that it, it goes in sync that. With these lies from the false prophets, you have these seeds sown, these ideas, all these suggestions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then you have the trauma of war and the rumors of war, which makes people suggestible. And then that's why it's the beginning. It's the beginning of sorrows. And then there is the true eternal gospel being preached. And in verse 9, it says, They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you'll be hated. For my name's sake or my character's sake. And people will be offended of you. And then on verse 11 says, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. So you have the false prophets that sow the seeds. There's a war and rumors of war that create the trauma. That open people to suggestibility. And, um, and all these other traumas from earthquakes and whatnot. And then God's people will preach sowing their seeds. And then will be persecuted, then their false prophets will come back. And uh, as they reject the truth and accept the, the more of these lies from the false prophets, it even says that, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And so you see that in this great war, in this great controversy, Matthew 24 is amazing. It tells you exactly, and the consequences, the snowball effect of every choice made of what's going to happen to this sinful planet uh, filled with uh, all these people that are infected with sin and then the ultimate lie is uh lucifer satan coming as jesus christ and that uh, and accepting his his laws that uh, ultimate fulfillment of the the mark of the beast that you become like satan and uh, you yeah. choose his methods yeah um, I'll, 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 point, I'll point out something what you just said um, there, Zach, and it's a, it's a phrase that I think is, is you read it, but then you forget it's there. Um, verse 6 of Matthew 24. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So, Often, we, we people read like, oh, the war in Ukraine, then the end must be near. It's the exact opposite of what the Bible says. See, so popular religion has half the truth, and then they come up with a false uh, understanding. Wars are a terrible thing, right? And you should be afraid of them. But what Jesus is saying is, do not be troubled, which is shocking, right? And then he says that the key thing is that the end is not near, not even close, because these things must happen, right? So if you're seeing wars, be sure, no, at least those who, like, at least from what I read here, you know, we're not even close to the end here. But people out there in the popular media who are like scandalous, right, are saying, yeah, the end is coming, right? It's it's the opposite of what I said. Um, so yeah. It, it's we need to we need to understand that yes that's the beginning of SARS or whatever, um, but we are far from the from from like like what really things are gonna get worse later on and we and we see later on and by the way like Matthew twenty four describes everything but they're not may not necessarily be in in, in um, chronological order some of some of it are but some like because he interjects different things like the, the the fall of Jerusalem with it as well, um, which are parallel, but but still like there's some things that are that are in there. That I you know, we can have a uh, in-depth study and and compare like things of revelation and how they how they line up. Um, and you will see that the the order is not quite but revelation also is not in order either. But um, we can look at that at, at, at some point. It's it's an interesting study. But however, the point I wanted to make is that this this those were wars and rumors of wars, and we seem to stop there. But the rest of it says like that's you know don't be troubled. Jesus himself says that to the believers. Mm -hmm.
So while yeah. everybody, so while everybody's alarmed and like and going crazy, oh my gosh, right? Jesus is telling his people, "Don't be afraid, don't be troubled, and don't be surprised because this is what's going to happen, and the end is not yet." Mm. We have to remember that it was written. Um, the book of Matthew was written like I don't, I don't know what, like 30, 40, 50 AD or something before. Yeah. So since then we've had we've had World War One, we've had World War Two, we've had the Vietnam War, we've had the French Revolution, we've had, you know, like there have been a lot of things. And mm -hmm. so the wars of our times seems new to us, but that doesn't necessarily mean but I think the alarming thing is that the the world is uniting. It has never shut down the way it did in twenty twenty. And the world has never rallied together to quickly bring a vaccine and mm -hmm. and tell people that they need to take it or they'll lose their jobs. The world has never been in a situation to where uh, America, who stands for the two horns, religious and social freedom, and because of fear, we were we were quick to exchange our freedoms for more laws and, and things that made us feel safe because we were acting out of fear. And God never uses fear or coercion. Only mm -hmm. Satan does that. God uses love and truth. And then the, the last thing. So, so yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't know, but I, I think that we really need to watch 2024 and 2025 is the new election year, the new president's coming in. And I, I think that, with AI and so many things coming that there's going to end with the, what they're doing with controlling internet and pushing their stuff. Like we're seeing some, we're seeing some very draconian things coming out of the United States who still shows that we stand for freedoms, but mm. are, are we, are we starting to use satanic type laws to force things that are? Yes. And stands the answer to that is yes. Yeah. And then the last thing, too, is to remember is just that God gave us 10 fingers. And they're going to testify to which law we keep. Amen. That's true. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, Yardamon, uh, do you want to say anything? And then I'll lead to a close. Mm, not really. Not this time. Okay. Well, guys, this has been an amazing uh, discussion. I know where this is uh, just leading up to another part, and I'm excited for us to discuss this. Uh, truly, we are in the great controversy. And uh, ultimately, what it comes down to is that, guys, we need to get into God's word. We need to get to know God, ask questions, mm -hmm. reason, think, use your mind, get used to thinking, get used to uh, get out of that comfort zone. So that no longer you just uh, accept, accept, but that you actually question and um, you come to a conclusion in truth yourself through the Holy Spirit. If you are a lover of truth, the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you. Do not be afraid. If you know God, you will not be afraid and you will trust him. If you are fearful, if you allow these natural disasters like in Maui, if you allow these rumors of war. And, and all these other things and open yourself to, if you become fearful you turn off the prefrontal cortex in your mind you are suggestible your subconscious is ready to accept all the programming and you will accept those ideas and those theologies of the false prophets and false Christs and you will and then it will just continue on and it will lead you to being comfortable with the lies and when the, the truth comes to you and it goes against your paradigm, makes you uncomfortable, it will reject your heart, will grow cold. So it's important to get to understand the truth now, even if you have to wrestle with it. Wrestle mm -hmm. with it now before it's too late and your heart is too cold and you are completely under the mind control, the spell of Satan and his agents. Because there's only we only got we only got one shot, guys. We got once we got one. Body, mind, we got one soul filled with the Holy Spirit to get this right through the Holy Spirit, to really get to know God. 
and there are eternal consequences with our actions, with our words. So we really need to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, and uh, really be prudent. Think about our, the consequences of what you do, even when, with simple things. Simple things can lead to big things, big consequences. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I just, it's exciting times we live in. Uh, I can tell personally, like, man, Satan is just keeps ramping up his game and uh, just the, the types of trauma he tries to inflict on me and all that and uh, trying to manipulate. And, uh, you know, with my walk with Christ, it's just been a really hard uphill battle. Um, but it shows you the times he's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so it just shows you the times we're in. And it just uh, wants to lead you closer to Christ and wanting to know the truth to set you free. So, guys, um, yeah, let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's uh, have a humble heart, be willing to accept the truth, wrestle with it, and being able to let go of the lies, let go of the false prophets we cling on to and uh, these false God and Christ um, constructs and false God, uh, false law constructs that we believe is uh, God's and uh, be willing to accept the truth and not only to accept the truth, but to share it with others with love and kindness and leave people free. Uh, Kim, I, uh, actually, Yordaman, would you like to say the closing prayer? Sure. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for the Sabbath today. Thank you for this Bible study. Thank you that you have given me the time and the opportunity to be part of it. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for Zachary. Thank you for Kim. Thank you for Miss Kim. Thank you for each and every one of us. And I pray that what we have studied here will help us grow and May you give us the Holy Spirit as we go through the new week again and that we will get ourselves closer to you, Lord, that you open our eyes to see really what you want us to see and may you continue to transform our character and help us to be who you want us to be. Lord, we thank you and we love you. Thank you for answering all our prayer requests and I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us here and may you be with us for this new week and may you, keep, may you guide us and may you lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Arman.